And I love the whole aspect that Neil and, and Matt were like, everyone experiences their own afterlife. Like, if you did good, you go to your own little heaven. I mean, like, no one is going to be experiencing rainbow and butterflies the same way. Everyone's experiencing their own aspect, which was interesting to me. It's the same aspect when you see it, when you watch The Sandman. I cannot wait for a Sandman season two. Yes. And by the way, if you have not watched The Sandman, what the fuck is wrong with you? I am going to live... Um, one of those, uh, thingamajiggies that pop in the screen somewhere right there on that corner where you'll see the description of me and doing my Sandman thing. I, I did do a Sandman thing in video, right? I, I'm not entirely sure. But if I didn't do it in video, I, I have a podcast episode on. There, there's a time where I didn't actually do video format. I only did audio, so I don't know which part the Sandman is. Is it part of the video franchise that I started where I'm doing reviews also on camera or is part of the audio only I don't know whatever again rambling sorry let's get back to this thing it has an interesting cast the people I've never seen in my entire life of course but they do a very good job of being awesome so this whole show like I said it, it's some sort of a mix side spin-off of the whole Sandman franchise and, and despair even makes an appearance there's little mention of dream and there's little mention of lucifer even though they go to lucifer's realm in hell at some point towards the show maybe the last few episodes now i don't want to spoil it but i'm definitely going to spoil it because if you hear and you know what i do i spoil shit i shouldn't be doing that but that's what i do i criticize shit a lot and i say all the great stuff about something again rambling i don't know why i'm doing that anyway Let's get back to the point. Now, the show follows, uh, like I said, Charles, um, Edward, and Crystal. Now, this this is where the show hits the fan. Initially, it's all good. These boys are solving cases in London, minding their own business. And then in comes Crystal, uh, a psychic who has some sort of amnesia because of a possession. Somehow, this girl was psychic and she was demented. A crazy dude, crazy, spoiled, rotten girl. But we find out later on in the show. In the beginning, she's a sweet, kind girl who's amazing. Who's very attractive, by the way. Okay, not important. I don't know why I'm doing that. Anyway, she... Okay, I'm spoiling shit again. She somehow... Fucks around and dates a demon. He tells a demon, or invites a demon to possess her. And then this demon steals all her memories. To hold her prisoner, basically. Like, if you get away from me, if you don't let me back in, you're never going to know who you is. Anyway, these guys uh, perform an exorcism and get the ghost physically out, but he still has a remnant of himself within her mind, like a seedling. So using that seedling, he pops in every time in her mind and fucks shit up for him. And I really love the fact that, this is an interesting fact for me, like throughout the show, whenever... Crystal, who's named after a blood... She's named Crystal Palace. That's a weird name. They could have just called her Crystal. Why Palace? Whatever. Let's not bring your football uh, uh, royalties and loyalties into this shit. It does not matter. You're not British. You don't know shit. Anyway, they named her Crystal Palace. Her parents. Weird people. Like, moving right on. And one more thing that's weird. You know the ghost that showed up with the case to say that she's looking for a friend, Crystal? What happened to her? What happened to her? I mean, like, she shows up. She's a wealthy ghost by apparently. She pays these boys, whatever she pays them. And they track down this Crystal girl. And they help her out, according to them. But they don't know that. The difference is here. Crystal wasn't possessed. She invited the possession. So it's a different case. If you're invited, you... Even if you perform an exorcism, according to this, it's not really easy to get rid of that demon. Okay, I get you. I feel you. That makes a lot of sense. It does. So if it makes a lot of sense, what's next? Well, she invited the ghost. I mean, the, 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 the demon. So she was in love with the demon at one point. Freaky shit. What happened to that ghost that... Took her case to the detective boys. They don't really talk about it. Maybe she's not important. Moving on. Anyway, these boys, this girl lends on a case of a girl who 
who's kidnapped by a witch. And this witch, Ether, I think. This witch called Ether is using babies that she feeds to her snake. Oh, this is where it gets all gory and creepy and weird. She feeds the kids to her snake to make her youthful and young. Yep. Anyway, this girl, I don't know how a missing person flower flyer ends up in London from a town in America or in Canada, whatever. But it does. It does. And when it does, awesome. Another thing, why are they using a boat to get to this city? Oh, this place doesn't have an airport. They used a plane and then boarded a boat somewhere to get there. Okay, whatever. Let's just assume that. Anyway, they get there. These ghosts, of course, can travel through mirrors to a certain place, but they're traveling with a mortal who cannot go through mirrors. So they have to take the whole long way, board a bloody plane with this chick, get on a boat, take forever to get from London or Britain to the Americas. They do all that shit to get this crystal girl to help this missing girl. Anyway, they long story short, they manage to get into the witch's house, get the missing girl. Crystal makes her forget all this creepy snake shit she saw. The snake never eats her. That lady never gets young, and she realizes these goats are actually powerful. So instead of attacking them point blank, blank she decides to look for ways to defeat them. And then there's this whole aspect where Edward is Okay. But whatever, it's not important to the story. Edward is gay. He sort of creeps out, puts a magic thingamajiggy on a, a cat. And this cat tells the cat king. And the cat king shows up and he's infatuated by Edward. Oh, he's infatuated. He wants to do the thingy with the Edward. Edward's like, no, 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 no. I will not do that. Oh, he doesn't say that. He's just not willing to do it because he's he died 16 or 17 so he's a virgin who's never kissed a girl who doesn't even know he has feelings for boys but ends up finding out towards the end of the show and finds out he's actually in love with his opposite best friend who's in love with or who likes crystal and who kisses crystal but can't feel it but feels it in his head weird and let's talk about how weird crystal is i mean like this girl dated a demon Literally slept with a demon. Now she's making out with a ghost. What the fuck is wrong with this woman? I get it. She can see the supernatural. She's psychic. She's from a long line of psychic people. You're telling me. You get possessed by a demon because you invited the demon to possess you. And then somehow these guys help you out. And instead of staying away from the creepy shit. You kissing demons. You kissing ghosts now. Well, I do love the fact that this show has this thing where Charles uh, and Edward, when they're talking to Crystal or Nico, Nico and Crystal look insane because they'd be having a deep conversation in the middle of the street, in a, in a store, and they look like they're talking to themselves. And people look at them like, which makes sense why Crystal was such a mean little bitch. In her recent memories, when she's eating those balls that contain the memories, which is a weird thing, but whatever. And she realized she was a bully to some people. It makes sense why she said she was hated by people. I mean, like, if you see ghosts and you often talk to them like they're actually there and you... And oddly enough, these ghosts can actually bump you and hug you and shit and you feel it, but they can't feel it, which is weird, but whatever. People would think you're crazy. Yep, they would think you're crazy because if you're seeing ghosts, conversing with ghosts, no one can see them but you. You look, you look fucking crazy. And people will feel some type of way about you. And because she has power, she starts being an asshole. That's not important to the story. But the story is very packed with a lot of interesting cases. And I just hope Netflix don't do another creepy thing and cancel it. So, you guys better go out there and watch the show. You better watch each and every one of you. Watch it and watch it with your girlfriend. Watch it with your boyfriend. Watch it with your mother. Watch it with your sister. Watch it with your little brother. Watch it with your cat. Because cats talk in this thing. Which is very interesting. 
if you really like this grotesque type of vibe, you know, watching Supernatural, watching Lucifer, watching, uh, what's the show again? Constantine, The Sandman itself, or Doom Patrol, all these grotesque type of things, I think you will enjoy this. You really will. This thing has an has a really interesting vibe and I like it. I love the fact that it's not like forcing the story onto you. It just flows. Of course, there's a little bit of humor. There's a necessary wit that you're like, that's not necessary. And there's this whole butcher chick. And it seems like everyone with the near-death experience sees a ghost, apparently. Which is interesting. But it's really interesting. Like, there's a cat king who has weird eyes in it. In it, it's very crazy. And then there's this walrus fella who was a oh my god, this show is is packed with so much detail, so much people that we really need to look deep down and find out more about these characters. I mean, like when you look at the depth and the depth of the character of Crystal, you look at the depth of the character of Charles and Edward, and then there's Nico. What the fuck happens to Nico? Nico dies, but she's given a little bearish thing. And then towards the end of the episode, we don't see it's Nico, but we see the thing she held during her death. The thing that the walrus fella from the magic store gave her. So is she alive? Is she a ghost? And why would that guy give her that? If it was not going to help her, if she was going to die. So did that guy give her a thing that helps her not die? Is she with her father in that little ice cube cave, cave thingy or... House, you know, made of ice in Iceland and not not Iceland in Ireland is Ireland, whatever. You know those cold places like Greenland and shit, where they make an uh, the Alaska, yes, where they make houses with ice. And I don't know how these houses with ice are warm inside. I mean, they have to build of ice. Outside of the science is incredibly weird. It's almost witchcraft, but it's designs, man. It's designs. It's amazing. Wow. Okay, I'm beating around the bush yet again. I do that a lot, don't I? Which doesn't really help out the story I'm trying to portray. Anyway, uh, this, this show, these characters were actually introduced in the Sandman article 5 or book 5, 25. Uh, in, in the pages of Sandman number 25. Although they don't have a, you know, long routine and long sort of stay in the whole Sandman universe. They sort of made their own whimsical place with a, a quirky, humorous tone that's front for, you know, gagging, bizarre. And I love the whole aspect that the show is combined with visuals, that it has a bit of animation there, a bit of, a, uh, it seems like a poorly animated tree called, called the Teeth face which is a weird name to call it mushroom tree that has teeth and eats ghosts weird very weird and it's also interesting that a witch is afraid of ghosts that she wants to get rid of them so she can devour the whole town in peace because you know these detective bastards every time she kidnaps a kid they'll show up and take the kid they have somehow overpowered her in some sort of way was it? It's actually interesting. Again, beating around the bush. So, what is this show really about? This show, uh, the Dead Boy Detectives, is about two dead boys who turn detectives and who are running from death, who do not want to go to the afterlife. One of them survived 70 years in hell, the other did not, but is friends with this guy, and they're basically running from hell. Running, not running from hell, running from death. And then enter. Apparently, there's a department where uh, children, mis misplaced children, you know, children who don't go to the afterlife. So there's basically, there's a department for everything. There's a department for adults, I'm assuming, and there's a department for kids. So this is a department for kids. Uh, the night nurse, this lady, is in charge of the department of missing children. Children who do not pass on to the other life. To the next, you know, the afterlife. And she's bound, hell bound on getting these boys to the afterlife. 
and somehow they outsmart her. And there's a whole scene where she's inside a a fish. Yep, there's a whole scene where she's inside a fish, meets an Indian dude who's an adventurer, apparently. Weird, isn't it? Weird, huh? Show is weird. Show is really weird. But I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So these boys go to the specific northwest town and try to solve this missing girl case and then are bombarded by a bunch of cases and they stay there a bit long. And don't forget the whole aspect of Edward using magic on a cat and then being bounded to the town with the little bracelet by this uh, night king who says you gotta fuck me in order to leave town or count all the cats in town and the cats end up being 147 i think which would fucking mean if this edward fella just went around town and counting cats he would have been gone days ago but whatever when i when i heard count cats i was assuming there'd be like a thousand maybe more and how do you actually know if you haven't counted that cat? Unless you have some sort of magical power, which I'm assuming fucking Edward has because he's a ghost. So he can literally say, I counted that cat, I counted that cat, I counted. So instead of solving cases and not dealing with his sexual weirdo thing, he could have just went around town counting fucking cats and left the town within a day. If there are 130. Unless this guy was telling his cats to hide. Which I doubt. He's a ghost. He can find fucking cats. So the whole cat aspect would have been wiped away within days. Maybe a day or two. Especially if he has a psychic and another ghost. You can look for ghosts. Yep. Besides, the cat didn't specifically say count the cats. It's that they can literally form a barrier, preventing cats from moving from one place to the other, and then count cats in one designated area, and then move to another designated area, and count the goddamn cats. It would have literally taken four hours with their magical powers and shit. But whatever. Whatever. We have to dilly dally once a cat get killed by a witch with a stick, and then lose his fourth life, apparently. But he's the cat king. Yep. Show is weird. It is very, 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 very weird. Don't get me started on the whole hell episode. When Charles goes into hell, there are no hell supervisors, hell tormentors, hell demons. No one is doing nothing to this kid. This kid basically waltz into hell, grabs a guy, and waltz the fuck out. You can't tell me that weird, creepy, doll thingy that was chasing them did anything significant in catching them. It didn't. It was a lazy job of catching them. It was. And I mean, like, if the door is fucking open, why are other dead people using it? You know when I saw that girl who was a stalking the butcher lady? Who was stalking, is it Jenny or something? Yeah, Jenny. Who was stalking Jenny, the butcher girl, who rents out a room to a bunch of teenagers, which is the weirdest thing. Why would anyone rent room to a 16-year-old who should be at school? Who cares? She's a business lady. She's just trying to make money. Who gives a shit? Anyway, she rents this room to these kids, and they, these kids are fucking weird. Talk about Nico who's infected by a parasite that's craving attention, but she's... um. How do we say this? An introvert. She likes to stay indoors. And there's a people in a jar, fam. There's a people in a jar. And this show is crazy. And I realized that during this review, I'm all over the place. Like, really all over the place. And I'm confusing myself, too. Let's, let's dumb it down. Yes, let's do a proper review in the last five minutes. Yes, okay. 
This show is about two guys who are dead, who happen to be detectives, who solve cases to help ghosts with unsolved, unresolved problems, help them get to the afterlife. They themselves don't want to go to the afterlife, and they're constantly on the on a run from death. And of course, there's this lady called the Night Nurse who runs a department in the afterlife that real deals with missing kids, basically kids who have not moved on to the afterlife, kids that are dead but are refusing to move on. That's the whole premise. They're running from these people. And then, they, out, while they're solving these cases, they meet this girl called Crystal, who's a psychic, who's possessed by a demon called David, who she was in love with said demon, but somehow had an issue with her, and this demon took over her body, and she no longer wants the demon in her, but she doesn't tell these boys that she invited the demon in, so they perform an exorcism on getting the ghost out, on the demon out, but only to find out since she invited the demon in, the demon can't really go until they do an actual proper, you know, exorcism where she actually gets rid of the goat herself because she invited the demon herself. Granted. And then there's this uh, Nico character who plays a significant role towards the end because she helps the boys escape the night nurse in a way. She is uh, possessed or has a parasite in her of uh, some bug thing that is craving attention. And uh, the boys end up helping her out and tracking, trapping this parasite, which is tiny little people into a jar, a jam jar, basically. If it, it looks like a jam jar, it's a bloody enchanted jam jar, whatever. And traps them in said jar. Yes. And then there's a whole uh, Jenny character who rents out a room to Crystal and Nico while Crystal is there in um, specific Northwest. Uh, trying to solve a case that actually brought them to the specific Pacific Northwest uh, part of America, whatever. It's made up play that's actually used by Canada, whatever. I'm rambling again. I'm doing it again. Anyway, so um, while solving this missing child, they find out this child is actually kidnapped by a witch who's using small children, infants, to feed it to a monstrous snake that helps her become youthful and young. Okay, and the boys end up taking the adopted girl and bringing her to her parents, and the story should end there. They should walk into the mirror and leave, but in order to obtain information about the witch, Edward done the stupidest thing, which is use magic on a cat. Apparently, you can't use magic on a cat because you offend the cat king. Okay, you offend the cat king who puts an enchantment bracelet on Edward, which basically binds him to specific northwest, until he either sleeps with the night with the cat king or counts all the cats in said town. And FYI, the cats are like, there are 47 cats. And he never sleeps with the night king, by the way. But he kisses him in the cheek towards the end as a thank you for helping us kill that demented witch who's immortal but ends up being dragged to hell plain, wherever it is, by the girl who gave her mortality. Right. Right. Yes, that's it. I don't know what else to say. And everything in between, there's a bunch of adventures in between that makes the story really compelling. Like, there's an adventure in hell, there's an adventure in solving a bunch of cases, there's a, there's a murder, there's a scene where this family is tormented by this creature, I'm assuming, from hell, that's making a family relive a murder. They've li relived their massacre, their killing, for 30 years. Basically, this guy takes an axe and massacres his family. And instead of the ghost moving on to the afterlife, they are stuck in a loop where every night or every fucking minute, their father, the kids, and the mother get killed by their father constantly. Constantly. Every day this guy walks down the stairs, whacks them with an X, and then the loop ends, and then it restarts, he comes back down the stairs, whacks them in an X, and these guys solve the case, which is an interesting aspect, how they solved it. So this show is multi-layered. Oh, I almost forgot, death makes an appearance, I already said that again. I'm saying it again. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Remember to hit that like and sub button. Now that was entertaining. Please let us hang out yet another time. Remember to like and subscribe. Adios, folks. Adios.